material scientist Mother Nature has already invented a way to harness that power, my plant. She converts sunlight into energy, which she stores as sugar in her cells. That's photosynthesis. We tap into that energy by burning or eating plants. Not you. But what if we could imitate that process by making like a leaf? That's what Nate Lewis is doing. He's got a major grant from the United States Department of Energy to convert sunlight into chemical fuel. It's what he calls artificial photosynthesis, and he claims he can do it better than my plant. We have systems already in the lab that do show that we can capture, convert, and store the sun's energy into chemical fuel more than 10 times more efficiently than the best plant on our planet. The power of the sun is no secret. More energy from the sun hits the earth in one hour than all the energy consumed on our planet in an entire year. We already have solar panels that convert sunlight to electricity, but they're fragile and expensive because the silicon they're made of has to be very pure. But Nate's got a cheaper, more durable way to make solar cells modeled on the leaves of the aspen tree. His silicon is shaped like veins of a leaf embedded in a conductive plastic film. The shape allows electrons to flow through the veins even if the silicon has impurities. And Nate's silicon leaves are cheap to grow and flexible enough to be rolled out like a solar blanket. All right, so this is the big moment. As I understand it, that is Nate's magic microwire rollable cheap solar panel material. So this is making electricity, just like the panels would make on your roof. There's no current when there's not much light, and then it sees the nice California sun, and we get more current. Now here's the artificial photosynthesis piece of the puzzle, the energy storage. The best way to store energy is in chemical bonds. That's what nature does in photosynthesis. That's why we call this artificial photosynthesis. Nate puts his silicon leaves into regular old water. The electric charge generated by these tiny solar panels splits the H2O into its component parts, hydrogen and oxygen. You can see if you just flip the switch and then we will see the bubbles coming off of that as it does that chemical process, so be my guest. I'm gonna turn on the sun? Just turn on the sun. This always happens, people say, here comes David Pogue, it's like the sun coming out. Okay. Whoa! So, those are bubbles of? Hydrogen gas. By converting sunlight into storable energy, Nate has figured out how to imitate what plants have been doing for billions of years, photosynthesis. If this scales up, the hydrogen produced could be useful in fuel cells to power our cars. They're left with the fluffy feather fiber. So what we do here is we take this uh, feather fiber and then we heat them up to this much higher temperature and that's when we get uh, an enormous increase in surface area. And so this black carbonized chicken feather fiber then becomes the sponge to soak up hydrogen. When you heat them to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, the chicken feathers become over 200 times more absorbent because trillions of tiny little caves developed in the fiber. You got it, nanopores. They give the hydrogen atoms a place to nestle. In theory, this material could fit enough hydrogen into a normal sized gas tank to allow 300 miles of travel between Phillips and almost no pressure. But cooking chicken feathers? Seems like a lot of trouble and steps to go from the chickens to the stuff we're putting in our hydrogen cars. Isn't there some man-made synthetic way that would be faster, just as good? Oh, you can. Uh, you can absolutely make these using things like carbon nanotubes and other materials. The difference is that this process is almost for free, whereas the carbon nanotubes and other such materials would cost you the equivalent of about a million dollars for your gas tank. <laughs> yeah, that would put a small damper on car sales in this country. So these are cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> if we want to make hydrogen a viable fuel, 
Richard Wool and his fine feathered friends may have found a cleaner way. And all for the cost of chicken feed.